Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to do a full drawing to painting project with these adorable gnomes. This was a request um, project. I just taught this class in person last night, and I do have some other gnome videos on my channel if you wanna go check those out from last year. Um, but this one, we're gonna take you from drawing to painting um, in this single gnome in the center of the page. So let's get started. Uh, materials that I have today with me, trying to keep it simple, I just have, or did just have, a pencil. You can use whatever pencil you have on hand. Um, I'm just using a, an HB pencil, uh, drawing pencil. You could just use any number two pencil you have laying around, some type of eraser. I'm gonna be using a kneaded eraser for this drawing piece, and then, um, for our painting portion, uh, I just have a number 10 Princeton uh, Velvet Touch brush. Um, a round brush is really useful, any type of round brush. And then I have my palette here, which I'll be going over colors when we get to the painting portion. So let's get started. So I have my probably a five by seven card piece of watercolor paper. Use whatever you have on hand. I'm using, this is Arches 100, uh, percent cotton watercolor paper torn up from a much larger sheet. We are going to um, kind of assess our page. We know that our gnome is going to take up most of the page. And then if you look at your gnome, the hat and the body are about the same size and the nose is kind of right in the center of that. So let's just find the center of our paper. So we're going to eyeball it about right here. So for our nose, we're going to start with the nose and then build out from there. We're gonna make a nice C shape. So if you held it this way, it'd be the letter C, but this way it is a nose. So it's the bottom of a round nose. And then for our cap, or our gnome's hat, we're gonna start here. And I like to just draw out dots sometimes to kind of figure out where I'm going with this line, but I'm gonna go from here all the way down to there and just right across the bridge of the nose, okay? And then I'm going to draw in our beard and we're just going to make this a triangle. You can add a few little shaggy details into it if you want, um, or you can just keep it a straight triangle like I did in this one, okay? After that is in, I'm gonna then work on the hat and I'm gonna draw a triangle upwards. So it's kind of a mirror image of itself with just some different details. Now this way, I'm gonna go up on this one side and then I'm gonna go almost all the way up on the other side, leaving this little gap here. And this little gap is going to be the space in which we create the little hook of our hat at the top or the bend. And the bend, you can make it long and swoopy. You can make it really long and come all the way down to the side. Let's do, we're just going to go up, over, and kind of changing the angle of the bend and narrowing to a point at the bottom. So there's our crook, our bend in there. You can have this edge of the hat go past where the crook meets, and that just shows a real nice tight bend in the fabric there, okay? And then we're just going to mark out kind of where our tassel is gonna be. You don't have to put too many details in it. You can see I just put the suggestion of, and mine is gonna be um, kind of a, a teardrop, upside down teardrop shape. You could make a round one if you wanted, more of a cotton ball poofy one, but this one is gonna, be like a little, kind of mimicking his beard a little bit. Okay. Now the body, the body is, and again, you can kind of um, fashion this to your particular taste. You can make him nice and wide and round or a much thinner elf or a more, not elf, a gnome, he's a gnome, a square gnome. I'm just going to make him a nice kind of wide and jolly gnome. So again, I could have done it more narrow through here, 
This guy is not gonna have feet, so I went right down to the bottom. I'm gonna keep it really simple and not even add feet, but your gnomes could have all kinds of other details that make them different and unique. So now the arms are just gonna be two triangles on either side of the body. Now here, you're gonna see this line is just gonna run parallel to the body. So just coming outside the body and then bringing the bottom of the sleeve up at a slight angle and then bringing it back up to the top. So kind of a bent or curved triangle. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just following the curve of the body. I am gonna do my best to kind of eyeball this and make sure the sleeves end around the same length. So I don't have really one really long sleeve and one really short sleeve. So there I have my sleeves and you can now erase the line that goes through the center of them. That was the original line of the body with your eraser. I like to use kneaded erasers. They're much more gentle on your paper, especially when you're working with watercolor paper and you don't wanna mess up the surface too much. And now let's draw our hands. Thumbs are on the inside. We're just gonna be drawing mittens. So one big hook this way. So you see that hook there? And then another hook in the opposite direction for the thumb. Okay, so a nice little mitten. And you can actually make the thumb a little shorter than the rest of the hand. Let's erase that a little bit. And I'm gonna make my thumb shorter than the rest of my hand. Hook on this side, and then a little hook on the other side. You can see we have two little mittens right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our gnome. Again, you can add lots of different details. You can give your gnome feet. You can change up the robe that they're wearing or the sleeves. You can make a much different shaped hat. It can just be pointy at the top. It can have a really long crook or, you know, like a long sleeping cap type um, tail on it at the top. Uh, so you can do a lot of different things with it to change it up. You can change the beard shapes and the nose shapes. You can have a little tiny uh, gnome nose or a really big gnome nose, and that'll all change the personality of your gnome. So that's the drawing portion of it. That took us seven minutes, including explaining materials. All right, so now we're gonna get into the painting, but before we paint, I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser and I'm just gonna rub it right across the surface. I like to make it in like that snake shape that you used to make when you were a kid with Silly Putty or Play-Doh and just roll it right over the top. And what that's doing is it's just picking up the graphite from the pencil without rubbing or damaging the surface. So it's just, picking it up like a lint roller kind of thing, but it's picking up graphite instead of lint. And you can see I have a much lighter outline now, not as visible. You can go into some areas. I mean, when you draw, you can also just dry drawing very lightly to begin with or using a much harder pencil. So your lines are very light. You don't have to erase at all. But I like to draw enough so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so let's paint. This class was so fun the other night um, when I taught it and we painted our gnomes on cards and they're just so cute. And everybody's gnome, even though we did the same exact drawing tutorial, everybody's was a little bit different um, and they were really adorable. All right, so I'm gonna start with Alizarin Crimson and we are going to do almost 80% of this painting in just alizarin crimson. So I'm just getting this nice and juicy, nice and wet, fully saturated. Now our hat is um, three-dimensional. You know, our goal is to convey some type of three-dimensionality with this gnome. The hat is a cylinder sitting on top of a sphere of a head, so it will have some shape. And the way I like to communicate that pretty simply in this very simple project is just by making the edges around the hat and under the brim or this um, this bend in the hat darker than the rest of the hat. So I've laid in my fully saturated color. 
here and here. And now I'm going to blend that out with a gradient wash. So it's going from fully saturated to slightly less saturated to almost a highlight kind of in the middle as it comes fully out toward the viewer. It's going to be subtle. It's not going to be a really stark at the end of the day um, transition where it's a really bright in the middle and really dark on the edges, but it's just going to be a slight transition where it is darker on the edges. And you can see as I use my brush, I'm doing it in a, whoops, I went right, I was watching the camera instead of the paper. This, uh, try to avoid that, but we're just gonna ignore it for now. And maybe I can turn it into something later. Or let's see here, we're gonna just widen hat. Mistakes happen. There we go. We just widened the whole hat. Back to what I was saying. When I do this and I'm using my brush, my brush strokes are going in an arcing fashion as if they were traveling across the surface of the actual hat. They're not going perfectly flat straight back and forth like a, you know, a coloring book. Um, they are making this arcing motion. I'm going to turn my paper. It's okay to turn your paper while you paint. Now I'm not going to introduce a lot more paint or a lot more water at this point because this has already started to dry. And if I now introduce a whole bunch more water and paint, um, it's going to start doing some funky things as it dries. So in watercolor, when things aren't drying evenly or don't have a chance to dry evenly, um, they can create what's called like backwashes and it creates these weird patterns of funky cauliflower things. So I'm not gonna touch it. If you put on your first layer and you do fill in that first area and it is not dark enough for you, it's not saturated enough for you, that is fine because you can build up to saturation in layers. You just have to let this first layer dry completely before you go in and do a second layer. This will definitely be something if you have student grade paints or cheaper paints, the pigment isn't as saturated in those paints as professional grade paints. So you definitely will um, need to build up layers in order to get full saturation. This um, alizarin crimson I'm using, it's actually Cotman, which is not a fully professional grade, but it's pretty good. So you can see I got pretty good saturation here. I'll probably still do a second layer, but these are pretty decent watercolors. I really like these, especially to teach um, beginners with. Okay, so let's get into the sleeves. The sleeves are the same thing. It's the same thing as the hat. They're conical shaped. They have shape and form. They're darker towards the edges. And really the darkest will add in on a second layer, a shadow kind of where the arm meets the body. But I like to start there and leave it kind of highlighted further towards the edge of the sleeve. So I've just... And I'm going to turn it and do the same thing. I'm going to be a little more careful. It's a much smaller space. I can't necessarily take those wide swooping strokes. But I am going to still try to... So you can see it's lighter towards the edge. It is very subtle, okay? It's got a little bit of lightness towards the edge and it's darker towards where it meets the body. That little bit of subtlety is all you need in terms of transition to make the mind, the eye and the mind understand that something has form, that it's not flat, it's not all one matte flat color. So the other thing, when I'm rinsing my brush, so you can see my water in here, it's very red already. I'm rinsing my brush and I do not take my brush and then go right to my paper. I dab it on my paper towel there's no drips of water on this. It's just damp. It is damp. If I rub my fingers on it, it's wet, but it's not like dripping water. You know, I dab it, dab all that extra water off. It does take some practice getting used to exactly um, how damp or how wet the brush should be to get certain uh, effects on your paper. But that just takes practice. The more you do, 
When you bring that paper, that brush to the paper and a big droplet kind of pools out onto your page, you know that that was too much water. Unless, unless that's something you're trying to get. You're trying to fill a big space or something and you really want to glob some water on there. All right, so sleeves are done, hat is done. Now we're gonna go into the body. And my first pass on the body, there's a lot of nooks and crannies in here to get to. So I really just concentrate um, on getting around the shapes and just getting an even wash. It doesn't even have to be so even, but I'm not as concerned about creating that those um, shadows just yet. I will do that on the second layer. So I'm really just working around kind of using a slightly lighter version of the alizarin crimson, not worrying if I my paint gets a little diluted by water. I just wanna evenly fill the space with my first layer. So I just wanna have a nice even wash where I'm not having any weird drying. Sorry, I'm being very quiet now. So you can all concentrate on filling in the bodies of your gnomes if you're painting along. Because it does, there are, like I said, those nooks and crannies, they take a little bit of concentration. Let's get those in there. Especially, you don't want to go into the white beard too much or at all, if you can help it. But the gloves, if you um, go over the outline of the gloves a little bit, it's okay. The gloves are gonna be a really dark color, at least in this example. So I know that that black I'm gonna use would cover up if I got into that bit of the outline with my red. All right, so now I've gotten all of that space covered. I'm just adding a little bit more pigment. I'm gonna evenly wash it over the rest. And then I'm gonna leave it because again, I don't want any weird drying spots. So I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Even if there are things that aren't perfect about it, there's spots that aren't dark enough for me, that's fine. I'll get it on the next layer. There not messing with it any more than that. So I know there's spots in there. When I go back in, I'm gonna concentrate on my second layer, putting some more concentrated pigment here where the arms meet the body to create a sense of depth and shadow where two objects meet. You know, when you're, when you're two hands together, there's a line between my hands. You can see that that is darker and the, the shadow is a little bit, um, darker around my rounded fingers. The same would be when your body, you know, the arms of your body are coming close to your body. So I'm gonna add darker shades there and then across the bottom a bit and, and that's it and just deepen the color. All right, so now we're into color mixing because we have to make a flesh tone and a shadow tone for our beard and our nose. So this is probably the most um, technical part of what we're going to do because um, it has to do with color mixing and color theory. I'm gonna try to make it real simple for you. So the first thing to do, um, there's a lot of different ways to get to a flesh tone, but if you are using a limited palette and let's say you already only, you had alizarin crimson. So I took a tiny bit of that alizarin crimson and I just, added it over here with a lot of water. So it's a really light, pale, pale pink. So let's see if we have a, a scrap piece of paper. Pardon my arm. So if I was going to swatch that, you can see this is a really light, pale pink. Someone's chicken tenders are done, I believe. The children are cooking <laughs> out in the other room if you hear my alarm going off. So this is a really pale pink. This could certainly be used as a skin tone in, in some, um, applications, but it's a little too pink for me. So when we want to go from pink to, let's say a browner color, um, I could add a little bit and, and let's say we have a limited palette where I don't have a brown, uh, on my palette, but I have like green, yellow, red, blue. So I'm just going to take a little bit of green 
and add it to that alizarin crimson. And now we have more of a brown color. And you can just, if you want it to be lighter, you just add more water to it. If you want it to be darker, you can add layers of that same color onto your painting, or you can just add more pigment. So more alizarin crimson and more green, less water will make it darker. Now let's say we were at our, that pink, sorry, I'm doing it right next to each other. We had that pink color and we want it to be more of a peachy skin tone. We would add a little bit of yellow. I'm just adding a little bit of cadmium yellow. So it's going to make like an orangish color, but oh, I just grabbed, there was a tiny speck of blue on there. So let's see. So here we have another skin tone. This is a nice rosy skin tone with yellow in it, but actually I grabbed a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. There was some in the palette there. So it cooled it down a little bit. And that's actually quite a lovely skin tone there. Now skin tones obviously have a really wide range from very um, dark velvety browns to very light peachy roses like this. Um, we are doing a Nordic gnome, but your gnome can be you know, from anywhere. These Nordic gnomes, I picture that Nordic skin tone to be a very light, kind of peachy, rosy color, having, having wind burn on it, um, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go with these lighter um, tones here, but um, let's see, in these samples, I feel like this one is a little bit browner, a little darker. This one is a little bit um, pinker up here. So it's really up to personal preference of how you want to make them. So these are a nice set of lighter skin tones. Okay. And again, making it darker or doing a full um, skin tone. Maybe I should do that, a full skin tone video for like a really wide range of skin tones. I'm sure there's some out there already though. Okay, so let's do our nose. So the nose, again, has shape and form. It's gonna have shadows. It's gonna have areas that are darker than other areas. Keep picking up a little bit of that blue. It's like sabotaging me. Okay, so I'm gonna take my color and I am just going to paint right around the outline, kind of thickly. I don't want it to be too thin around the outline. I wanna fill in a decent amount. So right around the outline and straight across the bridge of the nose here. And you can even kind of go out past the nose because we'll show you how that'll blend in later, but that's gonna be a shadow. Rinse my brush off completely. Dab my brush so it's just damp. There's no dripping water on it. And I'm going to start painting just with water right in the middle and gradually just circling out bigger and bigger and bigger until I just catch the edge of that painted area. So now I have a nice light area in the middle with a darker area around the outside because that nose, as it curves away from us, is going to be darker around the edges. We're not done with the nose, but we have to let that dry now. So we have a nice little highlight in the middle and a darker edge around the outside. And I also added this with that same tone, just um, a line across the brim of the hat, which is gonna be a shadow later, okay? So now let's get into the beard. It's a white beard, so how do we paint white? We don't paint white with white in watercolor, but we do paint shadow, excuse me. We do paint shadows and leave the paper white. So our shadows in this, they can have another range of tones as well. You can be a very neutral gray. You can have a more purpley shadow. These are more brownish shadows. It really depends on kind of the look and tone you're going for. So let's make, I don't want to go in there. So we'll go in here. I have yellow, a little bit of yellow in here already. So often when I have to make neutrals in my palette, I just look at what's on my palette already. So I have like a brown or a yellow or a green and I'm like, okay, now how do I get that green to a neutral color? And if you know color theory and the magic of it, you, <coughs> excuse me, will be able to get pretty much any color to a neutral or a gray. Um, so you won't have to uh, clean off your palette too often. So I'm just taking a little bit of this yellow and activating it. There's like a little tiny dot in there that's already dried. So I'm just adding a little water to it to make some active yellow here. And the opposite of yellow is purple. Well, I don't have any purple in this palette, but I make purple with 
red and blue. So I'm going to take a little Lizard and Crimson. We're going to make an orange. The opposite of orange is blue. So I'm going to take a little ultramarine. And now I have a gray. So a lot of times it's just mixing all the colors together. So this is actually, let me see here. It's always good to swatch your colors, especially light neutrals, because they're really hard to tell in the palette. So this gray is a little brown for me. Um, I want it to be a little more neutral, a little more of a neutral gray. So this is gonna have a reddish tint to it. So that means I have to add a little more blue. I know it's really hard to see on there. This is such a light color. Okay, let's see. So that's a little better. Still um, has a little bit of a tint of red, which I think is okay. Um, so I'm going to use this, but if you want to go even more of a blue or a cool gray um, versus the slightly warm gray, um, you would just add a little bit more blue to it. And I think it's because I keep picking up a little bit of yellow. There, that's slightly more neutral. So you can see those various tones um, or various hues of that gray color. So we have a really, really warm, reddish tinted gray, kind of a medium gray, and get starting to get more to the cool side. And you could go even further by just adding more blue, but I like this one, so I'm gonna stick with it. All right, so under the nose. Under the nose definitely has shadow. Um, got this big old honker sticking out there is going to cast some shadow on the beard below. So I'm just going to put in this organic shape shadow, not going to worry too much, not going to go crazy out of control. It's going to be largest towards the bottom. And you can see that's just kind of a funky shape. It looks really weird. It looks pretty bad right now. <laughs> this is not how we're going to leave it. We're going to blend it together with, um, the strokes of the shadow of the beard. So we're going to be adding strokes for shadow, but we're not gonna to get too carried away. We're not stroking in every individual hair on this beard, but we are putting in areas that are gonna give suggestion that this is um, kind of a long stringy beard um, that has shadows in it that communicate that. We are gonna be using the tip of our brush. So we're not pressing down at all. We're not doing a 45 degree angle because that's gonna give us some really wide strokes. So let's see. So when you do it, you're not doing, oh, that's really hard to see. Let me see if I can do it in another color first for you. So when you're doing it, you can't be on a 45 degree angle doing strokes like this. Those are way too wide. You have to be really up and I'll do it sideways. You're up. You're up on the point of your brush, okay? Your brush is just lightly touching and your brush might skip. It's like barely touching the paper at all, that it skips a little bit. That is how thin you want it. It's okay if it skips. You don't want any perfect lines that are going from top to bottom, okay? So you're in a vertical hold, brush tip, just barely grazing the surface. And even if it doesn't graze the surface through the whole stroke, that is fine off. Don't want any red strands in our beard. I think my gray color has already disappeared. I didn't make enough of it. All right. Sorry. You get to watch me remix gray really quickly. So I have an orange color. More blue. More blue. Pull in a little yellow. I think I'm still red. Yes, very red. Now I feel like I'm gonna be very blue. Thank you for bearing with me. So that's a really cool gray. As in not awesome cool, but cold, <laughs> very blue. So I'm just gonna add, I'm actually gonna add a little yellow versus red, because I don't want it to go the purple route. There we go. That's back to more neutral. Tiny bit of a lizard crimson. So, you know, mixing these neutrals is definitely an art and a science. There's science behind it, but the variation is so subtle that you just have to work at it. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to get the exact color that you want. 
I need a little, I used all my yellow in here. I'm sorry you're having to watch me do this. Maybe I can edit this part out, but probably not because it's easier just to make you watch <laughs> me make gray. There we go. Okay, back to this nice neutral gray. And I'm just gonna lighten it a whole bunch with some water. You have to be careful sometimes too when you're making a really delicate color. My water is really red, so it's adding um, to the pigment, um, the tonal change of this gray. It'll make it more red when I add a lot of water, so you just have to be careful of that. All right, we have gray finally. Woohoo! All right, and we're 30, like seven minutes in. Oh my goodness. We have to move more quickly. So I have my nice shadow under there. I'm gonna be up on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to start stroking in a few shadows. And as I get closer to the nose and around the edges, they're shorter lines. And now, so I've done a bunch kind of coming down. We're going to go up from the bottom. And again, we're not going all the way from the top all the way to the bottom in perfect lines. I'm doing these swishy little strokes, a few in the middle that don't connect anywhere. There will be shadows. And my beard has really straight lines on the sides. I, I don't know how I did that. I did not mean to do that. But um, when drawing on camera and you're watching the camera, you don't always see <laughs> the whole of the parts. I would round out your sides a little when you're doing yours, but there we go. So we have our beard, we have some details in there. And then what I can do after that dries, I could go in, I can make a slightly darker or browner, slightly different tone and put a few tiny little strokes of the even darker shadow just to give it form and dimension. But I really do wanna wait for that to dry. All right, let's go back to our nose. Our nose is nice and dry now. We're gonna go back to this peachy color which was a little alizarin crimson with a little bit of the green. Oh no, I think I added yellow actually. This is making a browner. That's okay. All right, so this is quite a dark color. I just need to add a lot of water. So I'm gonna put all the pigment down here. Don't need all of you. And I'm going to stick with this up here. All right, back to swatching. Beautiful peachy, rosy color. The, it's a little bit darker, a little bit browner. And I'm going to go back to the bottom of my nose. Okay, and we're going to add a shadow to the bottom of the nose. So same kind of um, value in terms of being a light, you know, peachy color. But it's going to be a little darker. It's going to be another layer because the bottom of the nose is going to have shadow on it. It's casting shadow, okay? So I'm gonna put that on there. And then right around the edge, I'm gonna take this darkest color right around the edge. I'm gonna add even a kind of darker line to give it some real definition right around the edge of the nose. And then lastly, I'm gonna go back to this gray color that I made for the beard. And remember when I did this shadow across the top, I'm gonna to add this right on top of that peachy shadow that I already put on there. And I'm just gonna let that dry. And that's just the shadow, it's the brim of the, the hat casting a shadow across the nose and across the top of the beard. Um, so it gives it a little dimension. Go in here. As this dries, it's gonna dry down. That highlight will be a little softer. And then our face, our beard, our nose is done. Unless you wanna go back and add some darker shadows, we're just gonna go and tackle this body one more time to add a little bit darker shadow here, the armpit. So back to our lizard and crimson. My body was completely dry. So I'm just adding Darker color, and you could add a little bit, a tiny bit of black or Payne's gray to your red or even ultramarine blue to make it a dark purple, um, to add a little line 
uh, right to that uh, where the body meets the arm or the sleeve. And I'm going to take a little bit of the alizarin crimson. I'm going to go right across the bottom of my gnome. Now you, when you are painting, you do not have to paint as quickly as me. I know I've been painting for 30 minutes already and showing you how to mix colors and things like that. But I'm still painting relatively quickly so you're not bored out of your mind watching me. Um, I know some folks really like tutorials that are, are going at the same pace as them. You can always pause and finish the step at your pace before moving on or rewind. Because after years and years of painting and doing art, um, you get certain muscle memories and dexterity that you have that takes time and years of practice that as a beginner, you know, you're awkward. Just like if you were playing a sport, if you were playing soccer or learning to shoot pool or any other skill that you acquire, the longer you do it, the more muscle memory you have and the easier certain things are and you don't have to concentrate as hard. But if you're new to this, you should not be painting as fast as I am. All right, so I made a, a dark purple here. I am going to add just with my blue and my alizarin crimson. I'm just going to add a little line here. Now this paper is already wet, which is great because that line is going to soften and bleed out. I'm just going to take my damp brush and just make sure that line is as soft as I want it. Perfect. Now you could use um, black or um, I've used black for the mittens on a lot of these. So you can see here, I think these are black or navy. Actually, those are navy blue. These are black here. I'm gonna make these purple since I'm already making purple over here. But a dark color, I like them to be kind of a contrasty dark color. This is kind of like a little Santa gnome with his color scheme. So the mittens, you're just going to paint in. There's nothing fancy or tricky about these. You're just going to paint them in the shape that they are. There we go. One and the other. Beautiful. Okay, and then let those dry. You can give your Santa, or not your Santa, your gnome, um, a little bit of a shadow underneath if you want with that gray tone that you made earlier, the gray that you used for the beard. I have lost that gray tone, so I have to make gray again. Oh, goodness gracious, I am so sorry. No one wants to watch me make gray again. All right, this is close enough. This is close enough gray. Very light version, and I'm just going to take a little bit, put it underneath. He's casting a little shadow on the ground. So that is the base of our gnome. And our last step, I'm going to put in here, my goodness, this video is longer than I expected. Um is going to be putting in the white detail. And actually, oh my goodness, I forgot. Take some of that gray again. We're gonna do our pom-pom. Gnomes are complicated, apparently. I keep saying this is simple. And it is when you break it down step by step. So your pom-pom, very similar to the beard, is gonna have kind of this area that's these swishy kind of flicks of the brush. They're going to be more concentrated towards the center of the pom-pom where it meets the top here. And then just a few lines of suggestion of how that pom-pom would come out and have like little tassels. There we go. That's his little pom-pom. All right, so now the white details. The white details are done. I'm going to close up my palette. I'm done with you. I'm going to rinse off my brush. We're going to use the same brush. Round brushes are amazing. I have to go get our bleed proof white. So give me one second. 
All right, camera magic. Um, back with our Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's this product here. This is what it looks like. It is great when you need to add some white details. Now, when you're painting large, like white areas, like beards and things like that, and you're trying to leave highlights in a watercolor painting, you definitely should just be leaving the white of the paper. But when you want to add fine details like this, like these patterns, this would be painstaking to do, um, to paint around unless you were doing um, uh, like a resist type technique where you're putting down, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, it'll come to me, but basically you're putting down like a glue substance um, that you would wipe off later that would protect the paper so you could paint right over it. All right, so I'm getting my bleed proof white. I'm adding a little bit of water to it. I don't really want it to be watered down. I want it to be fully opaque, but I want it to flow enough that I can get it to flow off the brush. So again, I have my brush. I have my nice pointy tip there. I rolled it around when I was picking up paint. And now I'm gonna do a pattern. Now you can do any kind of pattern you want. There's I've done all different kinds of patterns. I've done really simple ones where they're all stripes. I've done lots of repeating patterns, little Nordic different types of patterns like this here. Looked up like Nordic sweaters just to get inspiration. Um, let's do on this one, I'm going to do a really simple, um, it's not so simple, but I'm just going to do stripes on here and then I'm going to do a little pattern on the sleeves. Um, but stripes, when we're working on a cylindrical shaped object and it's cloth, the stripes are not going to be perfectly straight across all the way up like this. They are going to follow the line of the fabric. So see how this one curves around? And now all my stripes following that are going to be parallel with the first stripe. But as you work your way up on a hat like this, um, the shape I got my hand in a little bit of the wet paint. The shape is going to change, like the shape is gonna stay the same, but as you're working your way up this fabric, you might have to bend. So you can see here, this is starting to kind of curve and bend this way. And you are going to follow the natural progression of the fabric. You're not, you know, I don't keep going straight across this way. We're going to follow the progression of the fabric all the way around, keeping that slight curve or bend in the stripe to communicate that roundness. So you can see that kind of reinforces that shape there. So super easy, but super cute and like lovely and decorative. Um, gives it a little pop. Let's do the sleeves and we're going to add just little triangles across the bottom of the sleeve. And you can see I have not had to refill my bleed proof white on my paintbrush yet. A little bit goes a long way. And as long as you have a good flow that it's thin enough, um, you should be good to paint quite a bit before you have to refill. I just put these little triangle shapes on there to give it a little edge, a little border. I never used to paint the sleeves and then I did it once and now it's I'm obsessed. I think it looks so cute. Doo -doo -doo. So now we are finally, finally done. Only, you know, 45 minutes into this video that I thought would take 20. Um, but I am really happy with this little gnome. I hope you've enjoyed painting along with me. Feel free to change it up, change the beard, change the colors of your gnome, do different color hats and bottoms. Um, feel free to add little tiny feet on the bottom of him or change up the shape of your hat. It can be go on and on and on to make a whole little village of different gnomes that are going to make you so happy because they're so cute. Thank you again. My name is Shana Searcy. I appreciate you painting with me every single time you join me on my channel. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I'll be back with more videos and more probably holiday content in the next few weeks.